coming to you here from a uh, rainy, thundery Atlanta, Georgia. Just had the power go out a couple times, so I was going to come on a little earlier, but I wanted to wait for the storm to pass. Uh, I got a bunch of announcements to make. First of all, for those of you that haven't been to rickbeato.com, or for those of you that have, uh, a new version of my website went up. It's the first time it's been updated in three years, uh, which was two days ago. And the Beato book is for sale on there in the store. So finally it is automated where you do not have to write to me anymore to do that. Also, I'd like to announce that I am having my first ever master class or workshop or whatever you'd like to call it on July 29th here in Atlanta and I'll be talking more about that it's going to be an all-day affair it's going to be from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. and then we're gonna have a hangout afterwards and there's details on the website about how you can come here and participate in the master class I've got Aaron moderating tonight, so he will be communicating with you through the uh, length of this broadcast and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, today's, did I cover everything there, Aaron? Was I good? Yeah, you can buy your book on your website now. Buy my book on, on the website. Um, anyways, we're going to talk about chord melodies. I get asked about this all the time. Um, and there's a lot of things to talk about when you're, when you're uh, trying to come up with chord melodies. Chord melodies can be very simple, they can be very complex, they can be somewhere in between, but chord melodies are great if you're playing solo guitar or you want to do an introduction to a song by yourself, uh, even if you're playing with a group, and knowing how to construct them is very important. I'm going to take Stella by Starlight. The reason I, I picked tunes like that and All the Things You Are is because they have a lot of different two fives in them and they have a lot of different chords. So it's, uh, I think it gives you a better understanding than doing something like Autumn Leaves that there's very few different progressions in. So to start the melody, the first thing I like to think about, okay, what kind of chords am I going to start? So the melody starts, okay, so it starts on... E minor 7 flat 5 and the melody is goes from the flat 5 to the 11th but it's not it's not great to start with a chord and do that you could go or you could go with single notes sometimes I'll do something like this now that's quite a stretch I put the F and B flat together you could do it here Right? Or you could do something like this, which is kind of a cool sound. That is a half diminished voicing that really is like a B flat major seven flat five. If this is B flat major seven, this is B flat major seven flat five, which is a sub for E half diminished. There's your sound. And I just did a chromatic sidestep. So I started a half step above. Right? And I uh, might do a ba little bass fill or something. Okay? Or we can use uh, voicings, two different voicings for that. And I could play this inversion of E minor 7 flat 5 and go, which, which sounds a little bit more vintage. This sounds a little bit more modern. This could sound a little bit more modern. Now that's a cool. Or, um, I think I would take any of those. You could really go like this too. That's another chromatic sidestep. So I took this voicing of E minor 11 and I just started to half step up. This is what Joe Pass would do or Wes would do. This is kind of an old school. Anytime you have a chromatic note in the beginning of a melody like that, it's nice to just do a, a, a chromatic sidestep, meaning use the chord a half step above and slide down. Or, that's a little bit more modern. So, okay, so then I've got my A here, and then I have to get, 
So I'm going to have to harmonize those notes. I've got that uh, G, which is the flat seven. So I might do something like this. So there I used a, um, a shape from the diminished scale. And ended on a C7 sus4 or C minor 11. I could, I could have gone to there as well. So we can go. Then. And that would be an F13 sound. Well, another thing that might be cool is to play some fill lines in there. You'll hear Joe Pass do that, you'll hear Oscar Peterson do that, you'll hear anybody do that. Pat Metheny will play fill lines. So if I did... Um, fill line here. Um, and I ended on that F7 chord because that's the next chord. So I'm doing a, um, it goes to the ninth in the melody on the F minor 7 chord. And I did F minor 7 instead of doing it for F minor 9, I put the bass here on C, just for a variation, just to sound, um, to give it a more, a, a fresher sound. Now, this chord here is like a B flat 13, but I have the flat nine in the bass, okay? So it's like a B diminished chord with a, um, with a G added to it. So you can see how the two chord shapes are similar, so. A flat seven flat five. I could put in a fill line there. So let's let's think of what we've done so far. Uh, the beginning. Right? Then um seven right here, E flat major seven. I want to have that major seventh in the melody there. I can do it there. I can do it there. Those are both good spots. Here it sounds a little bit more closed because it's, in this voicing I have a second down low which makes it sound a little more open or I could, I could play it like that in a more um, just straightforward close. That's not quite as interesting, I don't think. Um, I could play this. Um, That's a little bit more modern, which is cool. I made it a major seven sharp five. That way, that way that note resolves up to the third of the A flat seven chord that's coming up. So you wanna always be keeping in mind where it's going. Is there a nice chromatic motion or really strong linear motion between what you're playing uh, at the time, like here, and that major uh, uh, seven sharp five, that sharp five there, really wants to resolve up. Right? Okay. Now one of the interesting things about Stella is that when it goes to the B flat chord there in the next section, it has the fourth in the melody. Now, we were talking about this earlier here, Aaron and I were talking about avoid notes. And I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but I want to talk about avoid notes for a minute. You'll see a lot of people in jazz, uh, jazz schools, this has been going on forever. And as a disclaimer, I was a college jazz studies professor 30 years ago, but I never taught avoid notes and I never ever took a jazz studies class in college. 
Um, when I was in undergrad, I was a classical bass major, and then I went into jazz guitar for my master's. But there were really no jazz, the only jazz class I took was a Lydian chromatic concept with George Russell for two years. Uh, that was the only real jazz class that I ever took. So I never took improv, I never took jazz history, anything like that, even though I've taught jazz history and I've taught improv, but I never taught avoid notes. Let me talk about avoid notes. Avoid notes are things like the fourth on a major chord, the fourth on a dominant chord, the sixth on a minor seven two chord. And let me tell you about why people talk about these, because we're going to use these things in our chord melodies, because they, um, a lot of people will avoid these notes in their chord melodies because of this whole idea of avoid notes. If you're doing a 2-5-1, uh, let's say you're doing a 2-5-1 in B-flat, okay, which happens in this tune. If I play the 6th on the 2 chord, the 13th, right, if I play that note, I've given away the sound of the five chord that's about to happen. Okay, if you give away that sound, it has no impact then. I mean, it could be, you could make it work. You could make it work like that if you went to a diminished uh, F sharp diminished chord as a substitute. Uh, so that is a substitute that would make it like an F7 flat 9. But that's what you have to do. You have to alter the chord. But if you're going to play the 13th or the 6th on a minor 2 chord, you have to have harmonic direction with it. So you have to go to a more tense sounding voicing or a more dissonant scale than the straight mixolydian. Even mixolydian sharp 11, you need to go somewhere with an altered scale, something from the diminished scale or something from the altered dominant scale. So if I give away that note, now I just did. creates even more tension. Because if you've given away the most tense note on the uh, two chord, this sixth, then you have to go to an even more tense scale, right? So. So that is one thing about the avoid note. Same thing with here. This avoid note happens in the melody. Uh, you have the, the E flat over the B flat, so. So I embrace it and I make it a sus4 chord. So I did. More like a, its counterpoint and hold down some of those notes so they ring right and then and then there's an a7 flat 9 I've got Okay, so here, when it goes to A minor 7 flat 5, I'm using a straight, because it has the 11th in the melody. Um, and I'm using a B major over D here. I could have gone, I could have gone, um, I could make it a, a, a diminished chord, because this is part of a D7 flat 9 uh, chord there, so. I think that sounds a little bit hipper, right? Then you have the sharp five in the melody. You could play it, you know, like this. And get that whole tone sound. Or...
So right there, I'm doing... A lot. What's great about the tune is that it has these chord tones in the melody. So when it returns back to the introduction and starts doing these... Da -da, da -da -da -da, You have these, um, the 11th in the melody there, right? And I'm using to, the, to my D minor 7 flat 5, and I've got the F as the melody note, the third. What did I do there? a half diminished chord and it's resolving to the dominant chord the altered dominant so you can take this chord shape and move it up three frets and it will give you the altered sound minor 7 flat 5 it has the flat 5 in the melody and I'm thinking well how can we harmonize that that would be interesting well I can play I could put a half step there and play it like a minor um, I could put the 11th in there and the flat 5 right next to each other which is a beautiful sound and then do a tritone sub B7 uh, flat 5 or I could say, well, what are my, some other possibilities here for this? So you got um, that in the melody there, right? So if I've got, so here's your C minor 7 flat 5 here. So um, here, right, if you're going to play it here uh, off root 5, you have the flat 5 there, which would give you this. It's hard to press down these strings down here. You could use that voicing. So here's a, another inversion of this C minor 7 flat 5. You can do it here or you can do play it with the root off the fourth string. my turnaround I've got B flat major I could go B flat over A G minor 7 G minor 7 over F to E minor 7 flat 5 or you could do a more modern sounding uh, ending let's say I did something like um, um, That is so um, um, futuristic sounding, if you will, that you'd have to combine some more of those elements in the tune before that. But what am I doing there? I took this B flat triad, so you're going... Uh, uh, and I went to a B flat major 7 chord, but with the 7th in the bass. Then I did A flat leading augmented. Then I did a D flat over G. Then, then I did uh, F, e, uh, e flat over F sharp or over G flat. Then I did it to D flat leading augmented. Then I did 
F sharp over C, uh, A flat over B, then uh, G flat linear augmented, and then I think it is, which is a um, almost like an appoggiatura chord. back on that B flat major seven. So I basically had a voice leading thing where I'm going. So. Oh, uh, what did I do? That's what it was. now that's the other thing to talk about where to put those in Stella is great because there's a lot of breaks in the melody okay so some fill lines in anywhere that there's a space in the melody essentially so I did uh, that's cool okay that's what I wanted to like C minor 7. And I want to somehow uh, run these lines down to the root of the next chord tone. That's really kind of a thing Oscar does, Joe Pass does. Um, if you can make, make lines like that. I'm trying to make the lines if I'm on here. Um, to make the lines resolve down to the root of the of the preceding chord. Um, Okay, so what are ways to practice this? Well, the first thing to do is you take each particular chord in the song, take the first four bars, and what I would do is I would say, I'm gonna take uh, this E minor seven flat five to A seven, just take the first two five, and take uh, this voicing here. 
So here's your E minor seven flat five. Play the next inversion of it. Play the next inversion. Play the next inversion. Now I could have gotten to here, but this sounds better. This is kind of a voicing that is not really used that much with a root on top of a half diminished chord. I think that the natural nine is a cool sound, so. And then take the A7 uh, altered and go. Same thing, right? So I've got. So I've got this, I'm using a G minor seven flat five, right? Remember what I said about this? If you're here, same thing here. If you're here, did a, a line here. So I'm going E minor 7 flat 5. Um, right? And then or you could go which would be a sub for A flat seven flat five, I use the uh, major seven sharp five chord a whole step below the root of a dominant seven flat five chord. That can be made to that. So that's a really simple trick to know. Or a major uh, 13 chord is a great substitute sound. Okay, so. So if I'm doing E flat major seven, here's where it comes in really in a cool way. Let's say when it goes to F minor seven, instead of this, instead of here, I'm here. And I'm using a two, five, one here. So this, this is a sub for F minor seven. I'm using an A flat six. It's actually the next inversion. And then I'm doing a second inversion or a third inversion, a B flat seven chord, or I can make it diminish because that would be like a this chord here, B flat seven flat nine, but I'm doing it. This is an E flat major seven, right? With a G in the bass. Here's your major, it's the same, same chord, just an inversion of it. Now this is where it's cool. Instead of going up to that, I can go. That's a really cool sound. Or I can go. You can also use the major seven sharp 11 chord, a whole step below the root of a dominant seven flat five chord. That's a great substitute sound, okay? So if I'm up here and I'm playing this chord, okay, there's my A, A, I'm, that would be kind of a typical, here's your A flat nine voicing. I'm playing the, I'm just putting the flat five on top. You guys are all seeing it. Westwood play. Um, you've seen that voicing. So I've got him here. I move back a whole step and play a Lydian uh, or a major seven sharp 11 voicing. That's a great voicing right there. I put the, uh, I put the D on the top of that. So instead of playing your stock dominant nine voicing, just go back a whole step and play a major seven. Here's your major seventh chord, flat the fifth, okay? Or you can play a major seventh chord and sharp the fifth. Or play it here. So if I've got... That's a great uh, thing. So if I'm going... So right there, I use that. Instead of going down here, which is a stock voicing, 
This will open up your, your mind by playing a major seven sharp five, a whole step, once again, below the root of a dominant chord. Drop down, you can play a major seven flat five or major seven sharp five or major seven sharp five like that. I think this is a good voicing and I think this is a good voicing because it's easy to play. So, which is always important. And then I'm right there. I'm right there to get back to the I'm right back there to get to the root of the B flat chord. That's one of the reasons. I mean, I can get back here. Um, but this chord, after you've played it about 350,000 times, you think, start to think, hmm, do I have a, another substitution for that? Yeah, you could play this, right? You can play this. You can play, you know, like I said, you can play that, you can play that. There's many different chords. You can play that. Uh, an E flat major, uh, uh, minor major nine chord as a sub. So I could go. Uh, that's nice. So take those uh, chord forms, practice the different inversions, um, sorry, oh, and hurts there. And then, you know. Some modal chords even on that C minor to F7. Right? Or that's another little trick. That's actually something that I heard Pat Metheny play one time. Uh, that's a little a modal run that you can use on any 251. So you say, let's say you get C minor 7 to F7. And I take the C minor, I take the root here, and I just play fourths. So it's all in one position. It's a very easy uh, lick to play, but I'm playing. So I'm moving the, the melody from. within this position. Wow. That's good sound there. So what did I do? I got my F7 chord. I went back a half step, or a whole step, and I played a major seven sh uh, sharp 11, or major seven flat five chord as a sub for the F7. I did E flat major seven flat five, okay? And then you go to your F minor seven. So, um, practice the different chord shapes on the top three, four strings, on the inner four strings, on the low four strings, so you know where they are. Uh, find where the melody notes are. Uh, another good thing to do, this is what people like Julian Lange will do. He'll play the melody and the bass line together, right? So he'll go, you know, something like this. Right, so I've got... And then... just playing the bass line and the melody at the same time with a couple little fill notes in between. It's actually easy to do the fill lines in there uh, if you practice it and you get used to doing it. That's where you kind of come into these things. 
right? Now some of the times when I've got, I've got So that's how I would approach chord melodies. Same thing if you're going to play over, you know, uh, uh, like um, uh, probably misty even. I'm I play. I harmonize as a. Or if I was playing All the Things You Are. Mixing a bunch of different things. You can play just with the chord shapes. Uh, so what I do there, I did. I'm I'm just using chord for every melody note. And there is with chords with fill lines in there, right? So I did tunes for chord melodies. Giant Steps is a great one because it's uh, it's a really easy melody to play and you just put the top note at each chord and since there's a really fast harmonic rhythm you don't have to get too fancy. You can just go so forth with it really good one to do and that one you can also alter the chords and make them hipper than uh, than you might but it sounds great just if you play the straight there's a dominant 13 there straight major 7 I mean I could have played you know um, it sounds better I think if you just just play the straight, 
that's the easiest way to do it, and it will always sound great on the gig. That's a way that you can play with a horn player, um, even if there's a piano player on the gig. That one lends itself to a really strong, simple chord melody that can be played up tempo. So, uh, questions? Aaron. <clears throat> People kept uh, talking about whether you hear the chords before you play them. Yes. Yeah, um, since most of the stuff I'm doing is, is pretty, um, um, I don't want to say basic, it's pretty basic for me, so it's very easy to hear this stuff. Um, I'm listening for inner lines, places I can go, spots I can fill, and um, I know what all these things are going to sound like. Uh, you know, any of you that have seen my ear training videos that I've done, um, you know, when I'm, you know, I recognize what all these chords sound like. I know what a major seven sharp five chord sounds like. I know what a major, a dominant seven 13 flat nine sounds like. I know what a, you know, dominant flat nine flat five sounds like. I pretty much know what all these chords sound like. When you start getting into some more, um, you know, some trickier voicings, um, uh, even the even the, the the bitonal chords that I'm doing, I know uh, what they're going to sound like. I know that's a Phrygian sound. I, I know that sound, and I know linear augmented. I know this dominant seven flat five flat nine. I know the thirteen flat nine. Uh, major seven sharp five, dominant seven flat nine flat five, thirteen flat nine, major seven sharp five, dominant seven fl uh, flat nine flat five. Uh, so I know those. So as soon as I hear those sounds, like I know what they're going to sound like before I play them because I know exactly what all those sounds are. That's really kind of a crucial thing uh, in ear ear training. And for those of you that come to my workshop. Um, we're going to spend time on the ear training. That's going to be a, a part of this. It's going to be split into ear training, improvisation. And were you going to say something? Yeah, for those who tuned in late, maybe you want to... Oh, yeah. For those of you that turn, tuned in late, um, I'm having my first ever master class, which is going to be on July 29th next month here in Atlanta at a place called the Vista Room. It's a really great club. They've got a nice stage with a PA... It's going to be a nine to five, eight hours with me. Uh, somebody asked me, well, what's, going to, what's it going to be like? And I said, imagine my 10 best videos times 10 with me live for eight hours. Uh, it'll be a catered lunch. Um, there's a, we're, there will be a hangout session later on afterwards where we can hang out and talk. Uh, there's a limited amount of VIP tickets that we're going to have for the night before that uh, we're going to have a dinner uh, for those of you that are interested in coming. And um, the sign up is on my new rickbeato.com, which my brother Mike and Aaron put together in, in the last couple of days. And Aaron actually put the shopping cart in there with the Beato book. So if you're interested in getting my book, now all you have to do is go there. You don't have to write to me anymore and I don't have to email back 300 people a day or whatever it is uh, you know and uh, it's just made it uh, made my life a lot easier um, even though I'm incredibly appreciative of everyone reaching out and I still encourage you to reach out and talk to me anytime you like at my Rick Beato number one at gmail.com I I answer pretty much every email I can I pretty much answer every email so um, just don't give me multiple part questions. That's always the uh, that that's always tricky because those are are hard to answer. Um, so if any of you are interested, you can go to my website and check it out. It'll talk more about it. But essentially, there's going to be a part devoted to ear training. There's going to be a part devoted to um, to improvisation, and there's going to be. Um, uh, a part devoted to theory, but in every one of these, there's going to be tons of Q&A. You can ask me any questions you'd like. I can address my questions specifically to what you want to know, and uh, it'll be great to meet. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you that, uh, you know, that are able to come because 
I really don't know anybody. Uh, I know a few people that watch my uh, that watch me here on YouTube, but it I think it would be incredibly fascinating. Um, I look forward to meeting to meeting everyone. So um, that that's you know it's it's really strange. I've got Aaron moderating for me now, and normally it's just me in here talking to my phone. I do these on my phone and. If someone were to look in here and watch, they think that is very strange. He's just stand. He's just playing to his phone, and I know that you are out there, and uh, it would be great to put faces to some of you. Uh, so I hope that uh, you know those of you that are near here, or those of you that want to fly here and 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 attend. I uh, I really look forward to to meeting you in person. Uh, any other questions, Aaron? <clears throat> um, no, I think I think that's it for today. Okay, great. Well, I really appreciate it, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, don't write me at Rick Beato number one to buy the Beato book. Go to the website rickbeato.com. Check it out. I've got my YouTube uploads there. Um, don't forget about my podcast. I'm going to be uh, putting more uh, interviews up on my podcast over the next couple days. And if you have any questions or suggestions on topics, please write me here, because that's really, really helpful. I talked to my friend Peter Smart today, who's 86 years old and um, follows me from, uh, from the UK. And Peter has sent me probably 20 titles for videos, and they're all great titles. So uh, this was actually kind of one of them about chord melodies that he suggested. So. Um, I really take those seriously. Uh, the the uh, it's easy for me to do the videos. It's hard to come up with the titles, good titles that actually speak to something that kind of spark ideas uh, in my head of a path to take. Um, so I welcome those. Anyways, that's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to rickbeato.com. Just go there to check it out. Sign in. You can register to be a, uh, I don't know, you can sign up on the mailing list there. Aaron, is that right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.